<laughs> like I said, see, okay. All right, all right. So let's. I'm J.J. Farrell, and I was born in 1949, Christmas Eve, in Fort Collins in Mason, Essence Park, to Catholic parents, which meant I had a lot of do's and don'ts. Like Friday, we couldn't eat meat, and Saturday, we had to go to confession, even if we had to make it up, okay? Sunday morning, we couldn't have any breakfast, because you couldn't have anything to eat and have communion. Okay, and then there was this, you know, holy water thing where you had to make the side of the cross when you came in, and you had to sit, I mean, kneel perfectly. You know, I mean, you couldn't let your bottom touch the back of the pew. I mean, because my dad would make sure you sat up straight. And then there was this life-size dead person hanging week to week. And in my child's mind, I thought, if that is what his father did to him, what is he going to do to me? I didn't have the concept at all, just this fear-based thing of got to do everything right. So one summer, a friend took my little sister and I to play with her children without my parents knowing where she's taken us because she took us to vacation Bible school. And I tell you what, we had more fun learning about Jesus and how he loved little kids. And when the teacher said, do you want Jesus in your heart? I said, oh yeah, I, I, I want this guy. He, he sounds like he'd be really a good buddy to have, you know? The only thing is, is that I didn't know back then, <sighs> we were told it was wrong to go into other people's church. And so, what I discovered was the joy of my salvation was quickly taken over by fear. I was always trying to do good, and I was told I talked too much, which I know I do, and children should be seen and not heard. So now go to your room. <laughs> I, I realized that isolation has been punishment. I fearfully marched through what was supposed to be my childhood, performing as an adult in a little person's body, filling up all the empty spaces with marching. The year my future husband came into my life, I started lighting candles each Sunday at church for the next two years. I wanted the Lord to let me know if this was the man I was going to marry. When situations came up that caused me to doubt our relationship, I had no one to, in my life that could give me any godly counsel or advice. So I ignored all the red flags marched into marriage, jumped through hoops for 21 years to a man that I was unequally yoked. And when he left me, he also abandoned our two sons, leaving them broken and wounded to this day. Well, I cried and I cried, yelling at God, I have tried to be good and do the right thing, and look where it's got me. That was the day my real journey with the Lord started. Jeremiah 30, verse 3 says, Cry out to me says the Lord, and I will answer you, and I will tell you great and hidden things that you may not know. It's just that God's been so good and rescued me from so many situations that I just, uh, I'm so thankful to Him. So for the next 30 years, I learned to trade religion for a relationship. I came to know the Holy Spirit through the book by Catherine Marshall called Something More. Two years ago, I began binging on The Chosen, which is a uh, series that helps me see who Jesus really was, a human being like us. When COVID hit, I no longer was able to provide care for the elderly, which I had done for the last 28 years. The forced isolation, again, here it is. It's like it wasn't a punishment. It was the Lord's way of taking an opportunity to reveal to me my need for a real relationship with Him and a commitment to His Word, to have a real understanding of who He was and who I am in Him. What it meant to believe, belong, and be loved, to really know why and what I believed. The belonging was my search for significance that only could be found in Him. He wanted me to share His love with others freely without using them to meet my needs. He gave me a new walk, one where I experienced His faithfulness and steadfast love. Each step, of every day if I allowed it. It's like, oh, goodness. <laughs> and to be loved, that no matter how badly I messed up, he was, he will never forsake or abandon me or stop loving me. He's teaching me how to, and when to speak, and when to say 
and what to say and when to be still. My life scripture is 2713. Psalms 2713. I would have fainted, given up, lost hope if I had not believed to see the goodness and the glory of the Lord in the land of the living. He has revealed to me that it is not necessary for me to march through my life anymore. He wants me to be his partner with him and learn to dance. <laughs>